Hey guys, Angie Thomas with the Thomas Family Hustle 205. Thank you so much for tuning in. I know in our last video we talked a lot about the month of June and how we're going to be ramping up. Uh, we will actually be hitting a minimum of 1,000 listings starting this month uh, in June. And uh, if we can go bigger than that, great. Obviously, uh, the motto is always, the more you list, the more you sell. Before we get into that, I'd love to remind you, please, to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on your post notifications so that you know each and every time we drop new information to share with you. So, I know that we have previously touched base on the processing, um, the way that we do things when we get the items in, um, what we do with them, how we handle them, how we research them, how we post them, how we photograph them, etc. But now that we're doing more volume, I wanted to share our process because it has been tweaked a little bit more. Uh, refined a little bit more and um, it's just a little bit different so I wanted to share with you. So when we first bring things in from thrift stores, yard sales, estate sales, um, shipped in or, or other means, this is our intake shelf right here. Um, this is where everything goes. Actually there's a little bit of overage onto the next shelf right now because we do have a lot of stuff we've accumulated in the last month which is or last couple weeks really which is great because um, as I mentioned to you we, we've got to get as much done as we can in the month of June in anticipation of our July month and a little bit of travel we've got to do for my daughter and her bowling um, journey so as soon as it comes in it hits the processing uh, center here um, you can see some DVDs, some shoes. This box here is actually a vintage uh, mixer with all the different attachments and everything. We've got some different vintage pieces here. Um, some little uh, travel television, the, the old televisions that you used to have in your kitchen back in like the 90s-ish, maybe 80s too. Um, some old toys. Up here I've got some McDonald's T.Y. Beanie Babies from Happy Meals. Um, I've got them all nice and organized in order by number. Um, there were certain numbers released for each year. This is another box similar, different year. Uh, crock pot up here. Lots of fun things that we've found. Um, this is where it goes first. From here, our process begins <laughs> when there's a minute of downtime or when we make the time is more accurate. We'll come out, we'll, um, we'll get a bin, we'll sit down here on the table. This is my processing uh, area as well uh, that you're sitting on right now. Hey, welcome to the processing area. Um, we'll start going through it. Uh, we might do a quick look up to make sure if it's, uh, for instance, a boxed kit. Does it have everything in it that it needs to have in it? Um, what is it missing? May make, I may make a note uh, on my sticky notes here about different information. Um, this is really just, do I have everything? Reassess it, is it trash, is it cracked, is it broken? Um, does it need to, is it, if it's a book, is it scribbled in? Those kinds of things. This is just the second look, if you will. Obviously we've bought it, we, we had, you know, we looked it over a couple of times before we bought it, but things get missed. It's, it's just the honest truth, especially if you're buying in bulk at like an estate sale you're likely to miss things. You're not going to look at everything with a fine tooth comb. That's just the facts. So it'll come here. We'll do a quick little bit of research to find out um, if it's worth it, if it's missing things, um, so on and so forth uh, before we move on to the next station. So give me a few minutes. We'll get set up and I'll take you to the next station. So next is researching and we actually have, this is just one of a couple um, different baskets of holiday or Christmas ornaments that we received in an estate lot. Um, I need to find out if these are worth listing as individuals, if it's worth listing as a set, um, if it's worth listing on eBay, or if I should just wait until closer to Christmas and, and list as a group lot on Facebook Marketplace. Um, Lots of different variables here, so we need to uh, get a little bit of research done. And um, I'm going to start with the first item. It states 1996 Luster Frame Incorporated, made in China. It's a little uh, reindeer rocking horse, if you will, with Santa Claus. Let's type it in and see if we can come up with something uh, to match. Rocking Horse Santo. Nothing is coming up, so I am trying some additional search criteria. 
is not the same thing. So, no, that's Hallmark. This is not Hallmark, or if it is Hallmark, which I don't think it is, it would have said Hallmark on the bottom. All right, so, you know, research is just one of those games of hit or miss um, research. There's a very similar one, but again, that's a hallmark, so that ain't it. Um, Kirkland, but not the same. We're so warm, guys. I can tell it's coming. Just wait for it. All right, let's look at sold. Let's click the sold option on the side. I don't know whether you can see that with the glare and all that good stuff, but... Um, Again, lots of options for a Hallmark. There's a glass blown one. That's cute. That's not the same. Hallmark again. Ohio State Bucks. If I knew their mantra, I would totally throw it at, at you right now, but I, I don't. I'm sorry. Sorry to all the Ohio State Bucks fans. Yahtzee! Found it! All right, so the search criteria used here was uh, Matrix Luster Frame Ornament, Santa Claus and Rocking Horse Reindeer, 1996. It was listed at $5.99 and sold at $5.99 plus $4.50 shipping, sorry. Curious to find out. I went ahead and clicked um, see other active listings like this. Um, and I wanted to find out if there are any comps. Um... Unfortunately, there's no, I clicked the wrong thing, you dirty dog. This whole using my fingers thing on this touch screen, I do love it, but boy, it can be a pain in my batootie sometimes. All right, I do not have, I cannot find anything that is the same other than this singular um, listing for the exact same item. Again, $5.99 with $4.50 shipping from St. Paul, Minnesota. This actually sold April 19th. Don't let anybody tell you that Christmas does not sell year-round. It happens, I promise. Um, I've actually got, it, you'll find it in another video soon, I'm sure, but I've actually got two huge storage totes worth of Christmas clearance stuff that we picked up um, from area stores that we will be processing soon, soon to get onto Facebook um, in the very near future because again, Christmas sells all the time. So we were able to find this. We did have to try multiple different search criteria um, options or, or search uh, parameters um, so that we could find it, but we did find it. I found one comp. Um, I may go around and look and see if, you know, I can come up with anything else that's comparable, but really and truly, I found this one. I know the exact description that it has sold under before, which is perfect for me. I'm going to go ahead and click sell one like this. I'm going to get this uh, uh, saved into my drafts so I can easily find it once I get this photographed, cleaned if it needs to be cleaned, which it actually looks fine, um, and ready to post. It will save me a step in the future to go ahead and click um, the sell one like this and save it into my draft folder so that I can um, edit it later once I have all the rest of my information. It's just going to save me a step and save me some time. Uh, give me just a few minutes and we will show you the processing um, that's done from this point. Alright guys, time for part three. Um, so it is very important when selling your items and listing your items to have the best photos to make sure that you've shown all the angles, all the different um, information that you can possibly provide to these folks. Um, you need to make sure that that's what you take up front so that you're not answering 20 questions and messages and so on and so forth. So I've got a few of my um, helpful tools that I use when I'm um, taking my photos. Um, today uh, we do, as we've been working through this processing um, scenario today, we've actually been working in bulk. I know you've only seen tidbits, but um, this is the new process that we have as I've mentioned before. And when we're taking photos, it's easiest when we have um, some different tools to help us out so we can expedite the process, make it look good, so on and so forth. So I do have, of course, um, a little hat stand. It does make it easier for me to get my photos and, and make them look good. Um, also, I have these little, weird little guys here. These are to assist um, with my 
shoes and uh, making sure that they look good while I am getting my photos of them. They fit in just like that. You know, shoes are ready to be photographed. So um, I'm going to show you um, a couple of examples just with these two hats of how I would take the photos. Um, making sure we get all the different angles, making sure we get the tops, the bottoms, the insides, the sides, any disclaimer from the company, any close-ups of problems with the shoes, anything like that. So first I'm going to prep this shoe. Um, I, I know that you see that this one, the shoelaces are tucked in nice and neat. Um, the tongue is on display. We're going to do the same thing over here. Um, I'm noticing that this shoe, it's not laced at the top, it's at the second hole, which is the same here. That's perfect. That's what we want, is for it to be the same. We're going to get these ready. Insert. Now you might be questioning, these are actually um, adjustable, the inserts here, they can go longer for a, a bigger size shoe and so on and so forth. So um, now I do always keep my handy lint roller um, close by when I'm taking some photos. I'll make sure that I've gotten everything off of the shoes, the hat. I'll make sure everything is good to go before it even goes into the little photo booth. We'll just give a quick once over. All right, I think we're ready. I'm going to um, show you how I take photos of the shoes. So I always make sure to get the bottoms of the shoes. People will ask about the tread on the shoes routinely. Um, so I'll be honest with you, it is not the part of the shoe that I consider photographing first. So I always try to do that first so that I don't forget on the back end, obviously. To me, when I am shopping, and maybe it's a female thing, maybe it's just a me thing, I like to look at the actual product itself. I'm, I'm not used to having to look at the treads and making sure that they're okay. So we're going to grab a couple different angles on the shoes. Okay, turn this way. Always get something from the rear. A lot of times people will scuff up the backs, um, not intentionally, but a lot of times there will be some problems uh, with the tips and the heels. So those are important to photograph. Now equally, you really need to get the tag inside here that has a lot of the details about the shoe itself. So, we're going to try our best to get the best angle on that we can. And luckily our phones are pretty good when you zoom in as I'm editing this later on Facebook, on the eBay page itself. Um, I can crop my fingers out of there, no problem. So, I've obviously messed these laces up. Let me tighten those back up again. So I've got, I took the inside tongue of the shoe, which is going to tell me the size. It's going to give me a few details about the shoe itself. Now I'm going to look these over, um, well, I'll take an inside photo to show the insides of the shoes, if there's any issues or problems. BT Dub, how cool are these shoes? Like seriously, that is, that is the coolest with all these colors. But now I want to inspect the shoe to find out if there's any, um, problem areas, anything that wouldn't have been seen by the photos I've taken already, so I want to make sure that we get a good close-up of it. Um, there's a little bit of discoloration here, so I am going to get a close-up shot of the tip of the toe. Oh, apologies, we are out of focus. Okay, let's give this one a once-over. Let's see. Oh no. Alright, so we've got a problem area. It comes off mostly when I scratch at it, but unfortunately still leaves a mark. So we do need to 
take a photo showing that. Otherwise, I think this shoe is probably okay. So let's snag that photo real quick. Okay. So that's it for the shoes. We'll move them out of the way. We'll do a hat real quick. And we'll be on our way. All right. So I personally, um, we tried to pick up a lot of collegiate um, apparel hats um, sweatshirts, things of that sort, jackets especially. Um, they are pretty popular for sales. Um, we are in the southeast, and of course, sports are a big deal here. So, I'll make sure we get that. Obviously, that logo on the back is equally important. People want to know about that. And then, there's nothing on this side, otherwise I'd take photos of that as well. Um, <laughs> hey, that belongs over there. Don't worry about that. Definitely want to show the inside of it, that it's still got the original um, uh, collegiate licensing sticker on it, as well as anything that identifies a size. So we'll take one snap here and we'll take one of this here shows the patent information and then we'll take a photo of this as well all right that's it we've got all the photos that we need we are ready to go ahead and post I know we've talked about that before. I think you guys are, are, are well aware of how to post and all the details that you need to make sure that you include when you're posting um, on eBay, Facebook, anywhere really. Um, but eBay especially, there's a lot of different blanks for you to fill in with different details about the product itself. Um, it helps it to sell, helps people to search for your product. So it is really important that you make sure that you fill in as many of those boxes as you possibly can from the information on your product itself. So I appreciate you guys joining us for all of this wonderful information about how we are now processing in bulk and some of the tips, tricks, and pointers that we've come up with along the way to try and expedite our process. Um, if you would, I would love for you guys to hit the like button. Um, feel free to chime in with any tips, pointers, or tricks that you're familiar with. I'd love to see the comments down below. Subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications so you guys know each and every time that we have more information to share with you. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Have a great day.